Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about data storage related issues, which you should be aware of and you should consider while developing and uh, deploying applications on cloud-based platforms. Let us start by looking at uh, what do you mean by data storage. So it's the ability to persist the digitized information on some storage device. For example, you may want to, your application may want to store some plain text data in raw files, plain text files, or it could be binary files containing, let's say some images or photographs that you might have clicked. And a storage device typically will retain the data for some interval of time. And the length of time for which it can store the data will depend on type of the device. For example, in case of uh, RAM modules, the contents of that RAM module may not survive when you put the machine, the computer, through a on-off cycle. That is, you, when you restart the machine, your RAM contents, the main memory contents may not survive. Whereas, if you have stored the contents, the data, on some non-volatile storage such as hard disk or some flash drive, etc., uh, you may you may retrieve the data back even after you have switched off the machine and then again switch it back on. So the data storage component may fall into different categories. For example, you may have raw files on a file system on a particular operating system. And you can also have more sophisticated mechanisms such as let's say a relational database management system engine or you can have a key value data store and so on. And the characteristics and behavior of each of these uh, categories, each of the storage components are falling in different categories varies. And a particular application may make use of multiple of such data storage mechanisms for its to achieve its functionality. Mainly the difference between different categories of these storage components, such as raw file system, for example, or the RDBMS engines, that mainly depends on the on how they organize the information, how they organize the data on them. For instance, a file system may simply store the data in a hierarchy of directories. And each directory may have some, let's say, raw files to store actual bytes of data. Whereas on a relational database management system, you may have some more sophisticated mechanism to persist your data. You, it offers typically some record-based mechanisms uh, called tables in which you can persist your information and run complicated queries to retrieve different parts of data. And both of these storage components, they address different types of problems, different types of requirements. And depending upon your application's functionality, you may make use of one or both. Now, when looking at data storage, particularly for cloud computing platforms, we are mainly concerned about infrastructure as a service cloud and platform as a service cloud. In, and we are not much interested in software as a service, mainly because on a software as a service cloud, you as a user do not worry much about uh, writing any kind of code or any software for dealing with the data storage. Somebody who has written the software as a service uh, application, it is that entity's responsibility to manage all the storage, etc. And that typically can be covered in infrastructure as a service or platform as a service. So that's why uh, when we look at cloud, we are mainly looking at these two variants. So infrastructure as a service we look at because as a cloud user, it is your responsibility to manage the resources, which also includes the storage. Therefore, you have to be aware of different storage, data storage related uh, aspects that are applicable particularly for cloud. And similar is the situation in case of a platform as a service. Here, even though you may not be dealing with directly a virtual hard disk, let's say, but you may be still using certain APIs, certain data stores that are provided by the particular pass cloud vendor to persist the information in your application that you write on such a pass platform. So let's look at uh, infrastructure as a service first. An infrastructure as a cloud vendor typically offer two data storage types. Uh, in an infrastructure as a service, as we have already seen, often a cloud consumer gets a virtual machine and typically you will have some operating system installed, pre-installed in it to start with. And uh, in order to install the operating system and initial services, it obviously have to have some sort of a storage. So there is something called instance storage, which is, uh, which is short-lived, ephemeral in nature, 
and then you may also have a long lasting uh, storage which survives your virtual machine restarts so data stored on a ephemeral instance storage may not survive your virtual machine restart whereas for a persistent long lived storage type storage device attached to your virtual machine the restarting of a virtual machine may not impact the data that is you can still retrieve the data that you stored on such a device and typically the ephemeral storage for example on amazon web services is it is often a block storage device which is attached to the virtual machine instance and in case of a persistent storage the cloud vendor automatically takes care of replicating it for uh, high availability and ensuring reliability levels and such replicas may be distributed across geographically separate locations like amazon itself have several uh, geographic locations where they host their data centers and uh, your your data may be distributed across multiple hosting zones and whenever some storage failure occurs your application may obviously be impacted if it depends on such data to be available such data device to be available the key point here that i'm trying to stress is that when you are looking at raw virtual machines obtained from infrastructure as a service cloud provider you should be careful about which storage type is short lived and which one is a long lived one and while you deploy certain components of your application on such a virtual machine you need to make sure that any valuable data that you do not want to lose whenever there is a machine restart a virtual machine restart you should not be storing such pieces of data on a ephemeral storage rather you should consider using a persistent storage device for putting all such data a related concept particularly when you are trying to build applications uh, which which write data and the data is accessed by multiple entities it may be multiple parts of the big application itself that application may have uh, different components let's say which can concurrently try to access data or the application may be accessed by multiple users itself and those users may be trying to read and write at the same time that is different one user is trying to read uh, while the second one is trying to write data Uh, so in these kind of situations typically you will have some issues related to how how you make sure that the data is consistent when viewed by different entities or different users so what is meant by consistency here consistency here means that we want to disallow multiple values of the same piece of data when seen by different clients at the same point in time so let's look at uh, this illustration a little bit in more detail that explains this concept let's say you have an application where uh, you have written some initial value at some point in time let's say the value is 25 and then a client a which can be a user trying to write the same value let's say or some piece of the application code itself so it starts to write at another point in time some different value let's say it's trying to write the value a and before the write operation has finished which it finishes at let's say a point later later point in time as indicated here 10:07 am in between a second client tries to read the same value the value of the same variable let's say this is representing the variable some variable x now since this second client has initiated the read before the first one has committed the write operation the client v gets to see the old value so that means during this finite window of time from 10:05 to 10:07 two different clients are seeing two different values of data that is the client a is assuming that the value is 11 it might have calculated it might have done some calculation and arrived at the value 11 which it is trying to finally write whereas the second client has no knowledge of whatever the other client has arrived at so a thinks the value is 11 which it is trying to write whereas the client b is looking at an older value because the first one hasn't yet committed the final value of what it is trying to put it so in that sense in this particular time window you see two two different clients are seeing two different values for the same piece of data which is this variable x so that is what is leading to the data inconsistency so let's see when can this kind of a data inconsistency situation uh, arise so you may have uh, let's say an application where your data storage is split across multiple nodes so let's say you may have a node n1 
where you are storing some variables value let's say initially the value is v0 and there may be another node n2 where also the value is let's say v0 at start now due to some load balancer or any other kind of requirement uh, certain clients may be routed to read from the node n1 whereas certain other clients may be doing the read and write from the second node let's say they read and write client uh, let's say this is client b and uh, this is client a so client a reads and writes from let's say the node n1 and second client reads and writes from n2 and at some point in time let's say client a writes the value v1 to the copy on first node n1 and immediately that gets reflected uh, into the second node as v1 and if the client second client reads this uh, second node here it will get the correct value whereas let's say if there is another value write by client a makes it v2 and this replication here does not happen let's say it still remains v1 before the second client reads that is this message hasn't yet come here so in this kind of a scenario you will have a situation where you have got your data inconsistent and another thing that has happened in this scenario because of this scenario is which we call partitioning of data now you have got the entire data partitioned into two two separate uh, nodes so we'll see more uh, in the subsequent slide about what is meant by partition so as we just saw in the previous slide partitioning of data means that you have placed parts or copies of data on multiple nodes and the nodes here could be uh, you know simply a different physical machine or a different database server instance itself and often you need the partition as we just saw you needed the partitioning scheme in order to achieve massive scalability we saw that uh, we were trying to the application was trying to load balance the requests on two different nodes which were hosting the value of the same variable and the read and write operations by different clients happened in such a manner that before the replicas were brought in sync the read and write operations led to a inconsistent data situation and what is meant by tolerance for data partitioning is that the application should not respond incorrectly that is it should not produce incorrect results even in the presence of data partitioning that is the data consistency is still maintained regardless of whether you have got your data partitioned or not and this is not an easy thing to achieve especially if you also want to make sure that your services the services that your application is offering if they still have to be available to the end users and despite of data partitioning you still want to maintain the correct behavior that is not possible that's what the next slide says uh, eric brewer gave a conjecture which later was proven and uh, became a theorem he said that achieving all of these three properties in an application that is availability consistency of data and partition tolerance is not possible that is you have to sacrifice one of these and you can achieve only two of them any two of them let's say and different data storage components and technologies have been developed which were catering to different combinations of these three for instance if you look at uh, cassandra dynamo and simple db uh, they are they are geared for providing availability and partition tolerance cassandra is a tabular uh, and column oriented data store whereas dynamo is a key value store and simple db happens to be a document oriented data store and also if you look at mysql and vertica kind of solutions they are geared they are designed for providing both consistency and availability to the clients to the users and on the other end you have big table redis and mongo db which are designed to provide you consistency and partition tolerance so depending upon your application's needs you can pick up the the most suitable database data storage solution uh, amongst uh, these these ones and there may be further variants available but the point i'm trying to highlight here is that you cannot number one achieve all of these three properties in a single solution you have to sacrifice one of these properties either you sacrifice uh, consistency or you sacrifice uh, partition tolerance 
or you have to sacrifice availability. So why is this important in cloud, particularly in cloud is that you have replication as the key mechanism here to achieve high availability of your of your data across different hosting zones. We, were, we, we started by looking at infrastructure as a service where uh, you have storage services available to you. For example, Amazon Web Services, a simple storage service that replicates the stored objects across different locations to provide high availability. And to make sure that the replicas are in sync is not an easy task and multiple replicas may not be in sync immediately after you write certain certain piece of data there. And as a result, clients who are trying to access that piece of data may see inconsistent results, inconsistent data for a small duration of time during which the sync is happening, as we saw in the earlier uh, consistency explanation in previous slides. But certain cloud vendors may offer certain guarantees about consistent reads, but they sacrifice certain other properties as per the CAP theorem that we just saw. So one example here is Amazon Web Services which offers read after write consistency for only put off new objects that is when you place new objects on a S3 bucket it will be visible to all the clients in a consistent manner that is you cannot have a situation where uh, one client is able to see and another is not able to see the correct value of the new object however it gives only the eventual consistency in case you have done the overwrite operation or deletes that is, if you are trying to update a particular object, that may not be consistent for some small duration of time, but eventually it is expected to become consistent. But there may be some small tiny duration of time uh, when the sync is happening and somebody is trying to access that same uh, object which is being updated in one location and if somebody else happens to access it from a different location before the sync has completed, they may see inconsistent values, inconsistent data. So why is this all important? First of all, if your application does not require any massive scalability or large enough scalability, then maybe these things may not have much, much uh, criticality for you. Because you can, if you are able to serve the requests and the load that your application has to uh, cater to, if all that can be served by, let's say, a single instance of the data store, then you may not have to worry much about all these replications and replicas being in sync at the same time and all that stuff because your data store is hosted on a single node and within the node you may not have to worry much about the consistency and uh, availability and partition tolerance etc i mean at at a smaller scale uh, at a at a lower level still there may be certain uh, issues but their side effects may not be as prominent as they will be in case you have a distributed uh, scenario where your data is distributed across multiple physical machines and those physical machines are uh, separated in a, in a uh, wide area, let's say. And why would that kind of a situation arise? It mainly arises when your application has to be massively scalable and there are limits to how much can be achieved by a monolithic system. Monolithic in the sense that your data store, let's say, is just a, on a single node. So if you are serving large user base, for example, like an eBay or IRCTC, for example, most of us who have tried to book railway tickets, as of today at least, there are time windows during the day where the system just doesn't respond. And at times it goes, it does even worse. It uh, Even after I have done the net banking transaction on it, that is entered my credit card and all it throws some kind of a internal error and all that scary errors are thrown at your face and obviously you are disappointed by using such kind of a application and you wish you had a different uh, more reliable service and all of this costs the business from the business standpoint also they have to incur extra costs in resettling the failed transactions and so on and obviously all of this costs money so that's why they want to make sure that the system works correctly and is able to scale and in order to allow massive scalability you have to devise ways other than what you have in a monolithic system that is you have to have some sort of a partitioning if you really want to go and do massive scalability and there have been other instances where the scalability has costed other other businesses where it has shown its importance for example amazon it's 
seems loses about 1% in sales if there is even a one tenth of a second extra taken in responding to the requests. Similarly, Google has found that 0.5 half a second jump in the latency may lead to 20% drop in their traffic and which obviously costs them a lot. So these are mainly the reasons why it is important to make sure that your system is scalable and for scalability is where you need the partition tolerance and uh, uh, availability and consistency and all these things are related to making sure that your system is scalable. So how do we address it? So first of all, as we have seen that you need to choose any two amongst the availability, consistency and partition tolerance. And it is almost always will be possible to address all your application use cases by taking any two of these. That is, uh, it may not always be the case that you will have to have all of these things together, all of these properties, availability, consistency and partition tolerance present together to achieve the all the use cases that your application is trying to address. So let's say if you have to drop the availability, what it means is that the services may be unavailable, unavailable on a particular node until data is consistent on all, all of the nodes. So let's say your data is partitioned into two or three nodes and you will stop routing requests to requests to node three, let's say, until the data becomes available and consistent on all the nodes. But this may not be an easy task to achieve because, because it may be difficult to make sure that the nodes are gracefully becoming unavailable and back available depending upon how the data is synchronized. That is how the data is made consistent on all the nodes. Secondly, you can think of dropping the partition tolerance. That is, you avoid the partitions from happening in the first place. A simple solution could be that you put all the data that has to be processed atomically on a single node. And then third one, you can drop consistency. There may be several use cases where you don't need very strict consistency and your use cases may still be served by eventual consistency that you can achieve by using specific data store solutions. Building scalable applications that address all of these issues that we have talked in this slide and in some of the previous slides that in itself is a very large topic and probably in a course, it, uh, probably worth of a course in itself. But uh, at the high level, these are the concepts, these are the aspects which one should be aware of, especially when building uh, cloud based applications. So just to summarize, we started by saying that there may be different types of storage uh, mechanisms and services available and they have different characteristics. They behave differently. For example, you may be storing uh, uh, raw files, let's say in uh, S3, Amazon S3 type of buckets, or you may have some kind of a relational database storage service available to you on cloud itself. And that may have different characteristics. And typically they vary in terms of how the consistency is offered to the applications by each of these storage mechanisms and other things like availability and your tolerance to partitioning of your data as seen by the application. So you have to consider all of these aspects when you design highly scalable applications using cloud based platforms. And we saw that you cannot achieve all of these three properties that is consistency of data availability as well as partition tolerance. And most of your use cases uh, you will be able to address by picking the two and there are various strategies available which you can use to implement such things. So that is pretty much it for this lecture. Thank you.